Hey, good morning, everybody. So good to uh, be with you again. And uh, Baletsi and Absalom, thank you so much for emceeing. Got my wonderful wife here this morning, and she's going to take a couple of minutes and share. But just before she does that, just a very warm welcome to you all this morning. That's Father's Day service. And I hope all you dads, yes, you dads got up early this morning and made tea for your wives, because that's what dads do. That's what fathers do. They serve their families. And uh, also, did you make hot chocolate for the kids? Frank, I've got a question for you as well. I know you're not a dad yet, but you're well on your way to becoming one, we hope. And um, did you uh, make the bed this morning, Frank? Serve your wife, Frank. Hope you made the bed this morning. Eh? I'm uh, going to hand over to Lee now. And before I do that, let me just pray. Let's just close our eyes. And while you're there in your lounge, close your eyes and uh, just open your hearts to the Lord this morning. Eh? And uh, let's just pray that God would minister to your husbands this morning and to your fathers and to your dads this morning. Father, we just come to you in the precious name of Jesus. And Heavenly Father, thank you that you're a wonderful Father and that you are an incredible and are an incredible Father to us and an incredible Father to the Lord Jesus. And it's because of the Lord Jesus that we are sons and daughters. Just pray for our hearts this morning. Pray that you would just minister to us, encourage us, strengthen us. Holy Spirit, inspire us this morning to be better dads. In Jesus' name, amen. Right, she has my wonderful wife. I'm going to hand over to her, and she's going to have no clue what she's going to be sharing. <laughs> so um, I'm waiting in anticipation. Well, good morning, everybody, and happy Father's Day to all the dads, the grandfathers, and the dads-to-be. So, um, well, my point of reference to a father is an absent father because my parents got divorced when I was a baby and um, after they got divorced my mom moved back into her house her parents house with my brother and I and um, so growing up my brother was my hero and my grandfather was a very good substitute dad I was very very close to him so I just want to um, stop here a minute and say to all the grandfathers that you actually pay, play such a huge role in your grand, in your grandchildren's lives. Anyway, Shane, unfortunately, my grandfather died when I was about eight, and that left a very big gap in my life. But um, even though I didn't have a, a earthly father watching over me, my mum had um, taught me about God, and I'd given my life to Jesus as a as a very young girl, as a little girl, and. Um, so, looking back over my life, I can see how, how my Heavenly Father was watching over me. When um, I was a teenager and I was tempted to get involved with the wrong crowd, my Heavenly Father would just gently steer me back onto the right road again. And as I got older, I was able to um, go to my Heavenly Father with big decisions like a career choice and getting married. <laughs> Good choice. <laughs> so, so my Heavenly Father was there all the time and um, I believe that he actually changed my name. I know Barry thinks that he changed my name, but um, I believe it was the Lord because my parents had given me a name that they'd made up. So it actually didn't have a meaning. And, um, but Barry started calling me Lee, and um, the spiritual meaning of Lee means from a sheltered place. Mm. And um, the scripture reference for that is from Romans, um, Romans 8 verse 16, which says the spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And so, um, Father God, he took a girl from a broken home without an identity and he adopted her into his family and he gave her a new identity as a daughter of the Most High God. And I'm so grateful for that. And so I want you to say to all of you who maybe don't have fathers that you have got a Heavenly Father who is, for, who is there for you and he will never, ever leave you. And to the single moms, I also want to say, teach your children about Father God because he is there for them and he will take care of your children. 
So once again, happy Father's Day and I'll hand over back to Barry. Thanks, dear. The only reason why I changed her name was because her real name is Charlize and I couldn't spell it. But uh, Lee was a lot easier to spell there. Good. I just want to share out of Malachi 4 verse 6 and it's probably one of my favorite scriptures in the Old Testament. And it says this, His preaching will turn the hearts of the fathers to their children and the hearts of the children to their fathers. Otherwise, I will come and strike the land with a curse. Interesting. It's the closing words of the Old Testament. Malachi 4 verse 6, the last verse in the Old Testament. And then there's 400 years of silence. And I always um, put a bit of weight to that because those are the last words of the Old Testament. And I put a bit of weight to that for myself as well. And I think we this morning should put a bit of weight to that as well. The closing words. And then again, in the book of Luke, chapter 1, that same scripture is mentioned again. And what I find so interesting is, and what's so important to take weight with the scripture is, is that it's mentioned in the Old Testament and mentioned again in the New Testament. Father God is trying to emphasize something in our lives when scriptures are mentioned in the old and the new. And we must take cognizance of that and go and have a look at those scriptures as fathers and say, Father God, what are you teaching me in this season about being a father? Often as fathers, we think we've missed it. And at times messed it up how we fathered our children. And I know for me, at times I felt that I messed up. And... Um, I want to emphasize this, that it's never too late, never too late to pick up those pieces and turn that situation around and become the father that God has destined you to be. And the Holy Spirit this morning, I'm trusting that the Holy Spirit this morning will be speaking to the fathers this morning in a very intimate, special way this morning. Eh? He's wanting to minister hope and courage to be the fathers that Father God has called you to be. He's calling you to be a great dad. Where have we messed up? It's God's goodness that leads us to repentance. Father God wants you to be a great dad. And he's here to show you how to become one. God, Father God wants to show you how you can become a better father. So the question this morning is, how do we become a better father? Fathers that will represent our Heavenly Father to our children. Do you know that God has destined you to be the father of the children that you have? God has chosen you to be the father of the children that you have. And that's a great privilege and a great honor that Father God has placed on your life. As some of you know, me and myself have become grandparents this last week. And officially we have his name now. It is um, Luke James Nesbitt. Very proud of that. And as I've um, watched Kyle in, in these last couple of years since he's become a dad, but even particularly these last couple of days when we've spent quite a lot of time with him, with Dylan and Aaron, his two children, I've seen Kyle, how he interacts with his two children. And I'm just amazed when I, when, when I compare myself to how I fathered him and his siblings, Jesse and uh, Jared, I'm just so proud of how Kyle has um, become such a great dad. He's patient, he interacts with them, he listens to them, um, very proud. And I think that's what we want as fathers. We want our children, our children to become far better fathers than what we were ever. That's allowing my kids, my two boys, to stand on my shoulders and project their children to a much higher level than what God has for them. We as fathers are all products of how your father raised you. And I want to spend a bit of time with this, on this subject. Think of how your father raised you, if you did have a dad. Because that's your point of reference. And often you'll think of how my dad did it. Well, that's the way I must do it. And often, that's not the right way. But then think of how your father was raised by your grandfather. 
Think of the circumstances that maybe your father was brought up in. Could have been very difficult. I think of my own dad. My dad, my own dad was born in 1921. Went through the Great Depression from 1929 to about 1934. And then from there, as a young man, went, w w was involved in the Second World War, came out the Second World War, landed up in South Africa as a young man. And that must have had an effect on his life. And the question that I never asked him was this, about my grandfather. What was he like as a dad? And that's a great point, a great reference for you as a dad to ask those questions. How was your father raised? I think for me, I know that's been helpful in how I've raised my children. Ask yourself another question. How was your own father fathered? That will help you in dealing with some of the hurt, the pain, and the disappointments that you've experienced from your own father. Don't let the past and how you were brought up disqualify you becoming the best dad for your children. Don't let the past disqualify you. We as fathers have the privilege of becoming great dads to our children. There is no doubt that fathers are more involved in their lives. And this, I just want to just, just, just really, guys, I, I see many of you being fathers and you're great dads. And I know there's been a shift in these last probably 20 years on how fathers are fathering their children. Eh? And I want to say this morning, well done. Eh? You're far more involved in your children's lives. Eh? Far more involved. Doing the nappy changes, helping bath in the kids. Um, well done. That, that, that's so great to see. And I want you guys to be encouraged. Eh? But don't stop at that. There's much more that God has for us as dads. That's a little tip. Remember, the bigger your children become, the bigger the problems that you as a father might be faced with. When your children are small, the issues are small. But as they grow up, as they become teenagers, the issues become bigger. As they become young adults, the issues become bigger. And the problems that they might land up might have huge consequences on their lives. But I want to encourage you with this, eh? trust what you've put in. Trust as a father what you've put in. Because what you put in as an early age, eh, there's great, great investment that you're living over your children as well. They might go along their own little path, but that's okay. Generally, for me, I know eh, that what I've invested in, eh, generally your kids always come back because eh, they know. They know who their dad is. Billy Graham said this, a good father is one of the most unsung, unpraised, unnoticed, and yet one of the most valuable assets in our society. So as dads, what do we need to become better dads? Well, we need the Holy Spirit for each of us. We need to be tapping into the Holy Spirit. And I want to share two things that we need as dads to become better dads. In Proverbs 13, verse 1, it says this, a wise child accepts a parent's discipline. Now, there are many scriptures that I could probably share this morning on parenting and fathering. But I just want to spend a bit of time on this. Where does a child receive wisdom? As a dad, I need wisdom to impart wisdom. And as a dad, I need to be crying out to Father God. Father God, I need wisdom to raise my children. Are we asking? Are we asking our Heavenly Father that He would impart wisdom to us, that I can impart and bring up my children with wisdom? And then the other thing that we need is a big dose of love. We cannot love our children more than Father God loves them. Ask God for a, a, a super divine impartation of His love for you, that you can impart that love to your children. Love, unconditional love for our children. Just think of the world without our Heavenly Father. Then just think of what your child has to deal with when we have an absent father. A father that's not involved in the child's life. There are unsung heroes that I admire, and, 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 and it's this, the single moms. 
You single moms are my heroes. I admire you. I don't know how you do it. You work a full day. You come home. You've got kids to deal with. You've got homework to deal with. You've got a supper to deal with. You've got kids to get into bath, into bed, and then it's your time. I admire single moms. And I just want to say this morning, eh? well done. Well done. May God's grace and his strength just minister to you right now. Minister to you, encourage you, strengthen you, give you hope, give you vision. Well done. Well done, single moms. You as a father have the privilege of creating happy memories. When you look back on your own life as a dad, what were the happy times that you enjoyed as a family and with your dad? Timelines. We have the privilege as dads to create timelines in our children's lives. So what do most children enjoy doing with their dads? Playing soccer, buying them an expensive toy, going on holiday. Believe it or not, top of the list is listening to stories of what you did when you were a boy. Best moments with fathers before your child turns 13. One, listening to stories about when you were a young man. Two, teaching your children how to read. Three, playing board games and playing cards. Kids love board games. They love playing cards because there's interaction and it builds security and family. Learning to ride a bike. Fathers teaching their children how to ride a bike. And the thrill of the father when that child, when you push the child and the child begins to cycle and balance on its own. That's just a great moment in your life and the child's life. Visiting the zoo. Visiting his work. I remember Carl and Jess coming to my office and um, we have these harnesses, these body harnesses where you can hang up and, and, and that's what they did. They used to hang themselves up on the scaffolding um, on, the, uh, on, on the gantry um, at our, at our, in our warehouse. And they remember doing that as kids and they loved that. They, were, they loved being part of what I did during the course of my day. Building a treehouse. Sure. I built Carl a massive treehouse in the back garden where I have a massive peppercorn tree. And when he had a hard day, when he had a hard time or when we had to discipline him, he went and uh, spent a bit of time in that tree. And what's interesting is little Dylan, my grandson, all he wants is a treehouse. And I had the privilege of three weeks ago of building him a treehouse. And uh, so he's also very chuffed to uh, have a treehouse just like his dad did. And then eight, kids love to camp. Camping, sitting around a fire and talking stories. Brian marshmallows, just being connected with their dad. Take them camping, it's not expensive. When today is over, it's one day less that you as a father have to spend with your children. You can never have that time back. Now let's look at that same scripture that was quoted in Malachi. I want to look at that scripture in Luke chapter 1 verse 17. And he will be a man, and this is speaking of John the Baptist, and he will be a man with the spirit and power of Elijah. He will prepare the people. We are never prepared to be fathers. You don't just arrive and be a father. There's a preparation that happens to become a father. And there are fathers in our church that you could be asking and bouncing things off. There are men that have a testimony of great fathers. And you dads that have young children, you need to be asking questions and bouncing things off them. Eh? There's a great impartation that can take place right there in our local church. He will turn the hearts of the fathers. He will turn the hearts of the fathers. Are you giving God access so that he can be a so that you can be a good father? You need to turn your heart to the father heart of God, to their children. And he will cause those who are rebellious to accept the wisdom of the godly. Here's a tip. If you have a rebellious child, ask God to cause that child to cause to see its rebellion. You have to pray into that situation. 
Often what we'll do is we'll confront that situation, and at times we have to, eh? But it's so much easier when, the Holy, when we allow the Holy Spirit to bring that conviction. Cause, and that the child will see the wisdom in the situation that child is in. And then to accept godly wisdom. Isn't it wonderful when our children begin to respond to godly wisdom, that as parents, that's what we begin to impart and our children begin to respond to that godly wisdom. Are you asking as a father to bring your child up with the wisdom and love that only God can give you? Love and wisdom, that's what we need as dads. And then Jesus said this, and I want to close off on this, but Jesus said this, I only do what I see my father do. Yeah, we have a father and a son, walking in complete unity and purpose. Jesus wanting to please his heavenly father, even death on a cross, so that we could be fathered by our father in heaven. Jesus had total trust in his heavenly father. And Jesus has given us access to the best father ever. It's even better than that. Jesus has given us access to his father, and I have become a son. Father God wants to father you as he fathered his only son. Will you let him? Will you let our heavenly father father you as a son? Maybe you're asking, how do I allow Father God to father me? You do it by giving your life to his only son, Jesus. Asking him into your heart. Asking Jesus that he would forgive you of all your sins. His death on the cross, his shed blood gives you access to the best father ever, our heavenly father. And you become a son and he becomes your father. He becomes your father. And maybe you're sitting in your lounge this morning and you wanna and, and, and you're asking this question, how do I allow the Heavenly Father to become my son and my daughter? Well, you do this by inviting Jesus into your life, by repenting of your sin and saying, Jesus, I need you today. Maybe you just want to take a moment and just close your eyes while I pray for you. Lord Jesus. I need to become a son. I need to become a daughter. And I pray this morning, Jesus, that you would accept me. And Jesus, thank you that you do accept me because of your shed blood on the cross. And Father, it's by accepting Jesus this morning that my sins are forgiven, that I'm redeemed and saved. And Jesus, I accept you into my life as my Lord and my Savior this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father, that I'm part of your family. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Guys, I hope you guys have a great, great Father's Day this morning. Thank you for uh, listening. Thank you for uh, being part of the service this morning. I am going to now hand back to um, Baletsi and Absalom. Um, have a great day. Amen.